Somebody say, yes, Jesus loves me. One more time, say, yes, Jesus loves me. We are in the month of August, and it's because of the love of God we are here, amen? Yes, Jesus. Yes. Sing it one more time. If you got your Bibles, lift it up in the air and say, Yes, Jesus loves me. The anointing of God is going to touch you. Yes, Jesus. Sing it loudly, sing it boldly. Yes, Jesus. Lift this high and say one more time. On the authority of God's word, I am here to minister to the people who are bound for glory. I'm here to preach the, to the people who know that this world is not their home. And I'm here to bring a word that is not based on emotionalism. Because many of us, we have experienced an ambush on the altar. And a lot of times we are focusing on how we feel, how our struggle is, and who do us what. I'm here to preach Jesus Christ. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. This morning, how many you know that whatever your problem is, situation, Jesus is the answer. I want to lift your hand and say, yes, Jesus. Sing it again. Yes. Sing it again. Yes, Jesus loves me. Father, this morning I humble myself knowing that your people is very important to you. And I come in this place, God, to not glorify flesh, neither glorify self. But I'm here to lift him higher. Let the eyes of our understanding be open that we may see and behold wondrous truth from the word of God. And God's people says, amen. give him praise and glory this morning. Amen. amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning we, are, we have a wonderful message. I don't know how it's going to go, but I know God's going to go through it. Amen. How many love to hear the word of God in your ear? How many just love to hear God's word? But a lot of times we live in a world that is so time conscious. We are time conscious. We are so conscious of time, but yet we miss God's timing. Amen. And this morning, I am glad that you are here. I'm glad that I could minister. This word has been on my spirit for over a month. So it's really, really cooked. Amen. <laughs> it's really, really resonated with me. And I want to share the word of God. Turn with me if you can because of the time constraints. I don't want to be preaching anything based on me. And um, turn with me if you can to the book of Acts chapter 1. Very familiar text. And I want to thank God for the celebration that we have just had based on the communion. But I want to take things a little higher in the word of God. Again, this is purely God's word ministering to your ear. And your job is to receive it and to believe it and become part of what God is in. Acts chapter 1, if you can, say amen. amen. And verse 11, or well, let me just go back to verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, he has, just, he has just delegated them to have the power that was given. And while they beheld him, he was taken up. And everybody read, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And a cloud, and a cloud what? Out of their and And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. I want everybody to read this. Which also said,
Amen and amen. Today, do you believe we are living in that time that Jesus talked about his imminent return? Do you believe that we are living in a time, if you look very carefully, we are living in a time that Jesus or the word of God has so boldly imprinted that man will be in rebellion to the truth. Amen. Amen. And just as we read the word, we are going to get a clearer understanding of why it is important to focus on the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Some people preach it and they preach it and they preach it until they say, where is he coming? That's in the book of Peter, that there will come a time that they will be mocked for preaching the word as the scripture says. Amen? Today, in the world today, we are seeing something called Soto Christos. Soto Christos is another word, I'm going to use some words, which is in the Greek word. Soto Christos means the false Messiah, false Christ, antichrist, amen. I wish I could preach to a church who could understand that we are living in a world that is sin-loving, God-denying, but always want to make you feel you are wrong when the word of God is right. Amen. 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 But I'm here to boldly proclaim the word of God to you. We are not going to be able to have any victory until we have song doctrine in our life. Amen. Amen. Song doctrine is what brings a believer out of mediocre Christianity into a powerful place that nothing can move them because they are steadfast and unmovable and grounded in the word of God that they can withstand the buffeting blows of the enemy in the last days. Amen. Am I talking to anybody here? So, Paul said, uh, Timothy, he told to Timothy, he says, in the last day, they will not endure song doctrine. Amen. Now, we heard the teaching that the church has celebrated the death, which is powerful, which is the atonement, which is the passion of the Christ. We move from the death into the burial, which is three days and three nights he was laid in that tomb, but he was not dead. He went to the underworld, as the Bible says, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so the Son of Man will be in the belly of the earth. Amen. Amen. If you know the word, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Song doctrine. Amen. You get in the word? Yes. We're not here to mix matters because this word is going to penetrate the lies the devil have told you. Amen. So, then Jesus says, no man take my life. No, no, no man had power to take this life. He says, now listen carefully. I'm going to lay down my life and in three days I'm going to pick it up again. And that ver he verifies that on the third day he rose and says, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Amen. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was now a secured victory that we have as a believer that, listen, the, the tomb is silently saying uh, that I can't hold him down. Amen. And because no grave can hold Jesus down, no grave can hold you down today. Amen. Because he gives us the resurrection power of the life that he have. Amen. And therefore, that the Bible claim that as Adam, the Adam life, we will all die, but in Christ, we are all made alive. Amen. Anybody hearing the word of God say amen? amen. Turn, turn, to your, turn to yourself up to the heaven and lift your hand and say, I am a Jesus man or woman. Lift your hand and say, identify it again. It says, I am who he says I am. I can have what he says I can have. I can do what he says I can do. I'm looking at myself, not through guilt, not through condemnation, not through shame, but I'm looking to myself, to the mirror of God's word, righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. The word of God makes you Remove yourself from inferiority into the things that God wants you. Now, 
We have all preached that, but there is a word that God has given me. It's called ascension. Some say ascension. ascension. Levity. Levity. Being able to resist gravity. Yes, amen. Resist the natural pull of the force of the earth. Jesus now had to prove another layer of his whole um, uh, uh, mission. Because sometimes we think like from the, from the cradle to the cross, from the grave, we sing that, and then we stop there. And we only preach that part. But there is... If I ask you the relevance of Jesus right now, what is he doing? What is his present ministry? What is he right now actively doing? The word of God has revealed to us that Jesus' ministry is not only disappearing in the sky. He has gone to prepare a place for you. He is at the right hand of the Father. He is sitting. Oh, come on, I hear somebody. He is my mediator. He is my advocate. He is my intercessor. He is the one, hallelujah, that is calling your name on heaven for you today. Amen. Do you want to hear more? Yes. When Jesus came to the earth, he came as a son of God. The Bible says that in the beginning, John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh. He's saying that the incarnate, when he described Jesus in the beginning of John chapter 1, he says the incarnate, the word incarnate means the word became flesh. The logos word became a rhema word, and that word became bodily, embodied, that he could walk and talk with his creation. Amen. As a result of becoming created, he became the son of God. I'm not here to make joke. I'm here to preach for somebody. Amen. When I see the sorrow Christos or the spirit of mockery that is mocking Christ via the Olympics or via television, I'm here to proclaim the truth to you today. Amen. Can I have somebody lift your hand and say Hallelujah. He is either the biggest liar or he is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Amen. you got to draw the line and say, listen, Jesus is what he says he is. Amen. Amen. So, the incarnate Jesus walked on the earth and after three days, I mean after 30-something years on the earth, at 33 years old, we know he was crucified. Could you all say amen? amen? He preached the word. He bring miracles. Whatever. But that was not his passion. His passion was not to do a miracle. Come on, somebody. Jesus did not come to do a miracle. I'm going to shock you. He did not come to walk in water. He didn't come to turn water into wine. That was just his mother asked him, hey, we got problems here. Was, all those things were, his focus was more. He came from heaven to die or to, if a better word interpret it, he came to conquer sin, death, and the grave. Did you get it? He was mission-bounded. He was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the enemy. He was sent by God, amen, to, to re-establish the timeline. Because man was falling off the timeline. Are you there with me? Man was no longer going to live forever with God. Eternally, he was broken off. So he got trapped in the cycle called humanity, where he was now born of a woman and of a few days and full of trouble. Come on, hear me say amen. amen. Man was just born of a woman. He had a few days and full of trouble. Then Jesus came in the picture and says, listen, he must be born again. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. And marvel not, I say unto you, he must be born again. Because if you are born again, you will enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. What he's saying now, am I speaking to you here today? Amen. Amen. I love to be where the people of God like to celebrate the word of God. Jesus now comes in and says, listen, I am going to say to you, no man, no angel can do this. That which he's about to do is called, he's about to repair the breach between God and man. We are now considered in our fallen state as an enemy of God. 
Your flesh is an enemy of God. Your mind is an enemy of God. The natural mind, the natural body, the natural impulse is to do wrong rather than good. It's to do evil rather than good. Come on, hallelujah. The natural things of the impulse of man is to be in rebellion of God. So Jesus comes now and do what? He took your sin on the cross on his own body and he repairs the breach, hallelujah, and reconciles you back to God, amen. Could you all lift your hand and say hallelujah for my Savior? Lift your hand and say, my Jesus is the only one could have done it. He repairs the breach. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we will not be perishing, but we will have the repair of the breach. We will all have eternal life. Amen. You know the word say hallelujah today. I really came to preach with a, with a, with a fire in my bone. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. We need preachers who will stand on the truth. Amen. And tell the world as it is. Amen. That Jesus is not to be mocked, amen. He, the word of God is not to be played with, amen. The word of God clearly states, hallelujah, that, the, that, that when we read of the mysteries of the Bible and you have an, a whole of a revelation and you grab hold of the things of God, it challenges your natural mind, amen. Tell somebody, say neighbor, say neighbor, we believe in not natural things. Say, so we believe in spiritual things. Touch your neighbor and say, supernatural things happening. Touch and agree right now and say, in the name of Jesus, your body receives supernatural grace, uh, supernatural strength. Uh, hey, the Bible says, whatsoever thing you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Hallelujah. Prayer is a power that opens a gateway. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah today. I'm not ordinary, I'm extraordinary. I'm not normal, I am phenomenal. Give him praise and glory. I move from mediocre into the things of God. Any man in Christ is living, hallelujah, and breathing the testimony that Jesus lives in me, amen. That's why I can now lift my hand and say, I can do all things to the Christ that lives in me, hallelujah, and moves in me and gives me the power to operate in, amen. The word of God clearly makes it clear that Jesus repairs the breach and whatever he did was finished. Now he goes up and says, it is finished. It is finished was a significant statement for the ministry of the, of the spirit because what he's saying now is uh, it's over for the devil. No more sickness can rule your body. No more death can rule over you. Uh, no more pain can rule over you. He has now said, it is over, amen. That's why we should not be sin conscious. We should not be devil conscious. We should not be work a world conscious. But we should always have that memory and the reality of Jesus who's alive. Amen. Can you lift your hand and say, I believe in him in the storm. I believe in Jesus in every. Oh, come on. I'm going to preach today. Amen. We're going to have church today in the world. Amen. Keep the word of God. Keep Jesus in the front of your thoughts. Don't put Jesus in the back of your mind. Put in everything. You know what I do? I don't know if you all do this, but I do this in the spirit. When anything I do, even in the natural, Jesus is always in the back of, in the front of my mind. Amen. I don't put him in the back of my thoughts. I put him in the front. Somebody say hallelujah. If you're getting something, say hallelujah. He's saying Jesus. Now the, the church uh, and disciples didn't understand what was going on, so Jesus ascends, and he breaks the law of gravity. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But he chose not to go to heaven as a spirit. He chose to stay in the human form. So he's no longer in the, in the resurrected. Now there's a difference between the miracle Jesus and the incarnate Jesus, because when he rose from the dead, he rose with a new title. Somebody say Hallelujah. Tell somebody he went in the lamb, but he came out a lion. Nah. He went in as a lamb of God, but came out a lion of Judah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he has conquered hell. And he went in. Hallelujah. He opened not his mouth. They slapped him. They spit on him. He didn't say not a word. But when he rose from the dead, hallelujah, he says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. 
Therefore, we are no longer under the subjection of restrictions because his, his victory now assures us uh, that he is a Lion of Judah. Amen. Amen. So the Jesus, the Christ, now becomes more a significant in the New Testament. He's now known as Christ Jesus, putting the resurrection in front of everything else. Somebody say hallelujah. So it's time for you to lift your hand and say, my Jesus is resurrected. I, you, know, you know, people don't know do they say, I serve a resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You, pray, you put your hands on somebody say, in the name of the resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk, amen. The living God, amen. Proven. How many know he's proven himself over and over to you, amen. All right. Are we going somewhere in the word, amen. So he, 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 he rose from the dead. He stood in the form of man. And what he did was he goes into heaven with his humanity. Somebody say amen. amen. He took your humanity. I have all the scripture, but I don't have time to go with it. Is it right for you? Yes. But I'll give you all the notes if you want. He took your humanity into eternity so he can be touched with your infirmity while you're on earth. Amen. amen. Can I say it again for you out of the spirit? Jesus, son of God, now he says, now listen, I'm not going to be son of God in heaven. I'm going to be the son of man. Do I get this teaching now? The son of man is the title that he's adopted. Because he says, when the son of man shall return, will I find faith on the earth? When the son of man will come in the clouds with his angels. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. When the son of man, are you, am I talking to anybody here? What he's doing is, in the Godhead, he's now reconciled God and man. 100% amen. Now, what he's doing, are you there with me? So here you are. In heaven, they don't understand about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Heaven don't know about the calendar that you deal with. Heaven doesn't know about bills to pay. Heaven doesn't know about cemeteries. Heaven doesn't know about graveyard. Heaven doesn't know about hospital. Heaven does no know, know about the pressure of people uh, back to backstabbing you. Heaven has no idea of that. But there goes Jesus up to heaven. And when you cry out, he says, I am the mediator. I am your lawyer. I am your advocate. I am your intercessor. And I know what you're going through. I was here. Amen. So now he can be touched with your infirmity. So therefore, I come boldly before the throne of grace and make my wishes and wants. Give me praise and glory. Hallelujah. Can you all say hallelujah? If you ever came out of idolatry, idolatry is where they make all these gods and sometimes they put the gods and they stand there and if people are so, they, they, they stand there and they're crying and they pray to their God, but they touch that God, it's cold. Cold stone. Amen. It's cold stone. Touch that God has nothing. But when you pray and you call on the Lord in the spirit, God is touched with your prayers today. But uh, he's not only touched. Touch somebody say he answers prayer. Amen. Now, he goes into heaven. And as I said, we have uh, there are four titles that he's gone. He says, listen, I'm going up there, but I have a job that you can do. I have to now go up there and be in First John chapter uh, uh, 2, verse 1. He's, the, uh, he's your advocate, as I said, mediator, whatever. But what really challenges me when I read the scripture was so powerful that I shared it with some of the, the folks that were in the classes, and I want to share that with you this morning, that a word that really just came over my spirit and I couldn't help myself. Could we go a little deeper here? He says, and a cloud came and took him up. Someone said a cloud. That took, that took me by surprise because the word just became so, so visual to me. Amen. Could you imagine Jesus sta standing there and they're worshiping him and he's just talking and all of a sudden a cloud, he just had to levitate. This is mind-boggling. But the Bible says so. By the way, let me tell you something you don't know about a little 
side, uh, you see gravity acts on our body and gravity is what makes us old. The gravitational pull of the earth is pulling you downward. It creates wrinkles. It creates sagging in your skin. Am I talking to you, everybody? Gravity is what keeps you down. And it keeps pulling you, pulling you, pulling you until it pulls you into the grave. I'm so glad that I have the gra Jesus defy gravity. So that I one day you'll see me out here. Next minute you'll see me up there. Amen. My levity from God. Are you getting this message? Say hallelujah. He defies the laws of the natural world so that we can now have a hope beyond glory. Amen. What is the, what is the ascension of Jesus does? It tells us boldly that Jesus conquered every enemy on the planet earth. Made an open show of them. He that ascended, amen, he that descended, hallelujah, went and took the captive captive in Ephesians chapter 4, and he led them into glory. Somebody say hallelujah. You all get in and say amen. I mean, if, if you know the Bible, shout, I know that this truth, brother. I know that Jesus went into hell, and he led the captive from Abraham downward to all the saints of God that were trapped in the underworld called paradise. They were trapped in an underworld compartment called paradise, which was also known as Abraham's bosom, and they were stuck there, and they were waiting for something to happen. The Bible says that even Joseph, when the children of Israel was leaving Egypt land, they begged them, he said, listen, put my bones together and take me out of this place, because where you're going, there's going to be a resurrection that's going to come. Somebody say, hallelujah. So he did what? He put the bones of Joseph, and they put all the saints were buried in a certain location with the hope that a Messiah is going to come. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to preach for you. Amen. And he came hallelujah. And when he came the people that was in the underworld, they didn't know what was going on but they saw a great light. And the light that was coming was not a sunlight, not a moonlight, not a candlelight. It was a glory himself. Hallelujah. The king of glory hallelujah was entering into the darkest realm and he was coming there. Hallelujah. And he came to the first ancient gate and says open up the gate and they say who is talking he says open up the gate and let the king of glory come in they say who is this king of glory he said he the lord strong and mighty the lord of hosts he is the king of glory he entered into the realm hallelujah i wish some of you lift your hand and celebrate hallelujah he says now give me that key you can't have no power over them anymore. Then he opened another gate, hallelujah. And then he went in, he had the keys, the keys of, of the gate of hell, the grave guy, of death, and of the grave. He put it on. Then he opened and says, now, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the lie. Follow me. Follow me, hallelujah. Follow me, hallelujah. Just follow me, Hallelujah. How many are following Jesus in this dark world? How many lift your hand and say hallelujah? I'm just following him, amen. They didn't know where they were going. Abraham needed a Messiah. Moses needed a Messiah. Don't go and pray to Moses and Abraham. Jesus is the only one, amen. Read your Bible carefully in the book of Matthew and Luke. It says, when he rose, other graves open up. And they all had a visibility of seeing the saints of God appearing to them. Amen. My friend, when he rose, hallelujah, he rose with a victory song. Amen. That's why I came to preach for you. I don't preach to no Jesus who can, oh, wrong your cross. No, no, no. I want to preach a Jesus, amen, that terrifies every demon in hell. Amen. That when he was lifted up, he said, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, in earth, and under the earth, giving praise and glory to the Lord and glory of his name. That's what we say. The name of heaven done bow to him already. The knees bow to him in heaven. Then he conquered earth, his knees bow, but then he went to the underworld. Wherefore he spoiled the principalities and powers there be, making an open shame of them. Amen. 
bringing away, my friend. He stripped them of their power. He stripped them of their power. And he broke the bands on the bars of hell open. So you and I can't live in hell anymore, but live in Christ. Hallelujah. If you don't know what I'm talking, read your Bible, amen. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so, amen. Somebody said a cloud. In, in Luke, oh, I don't have time. Oh, glory to Are you loving the word? Yeah. Loving the word? The man from heaven, amen? Yeah. Jesus is now. Jesus is a cloud, a cloud. That word came to me. Now, if you know your scripture very carefully, the Bible says that the cloud well, in the Old Testament used to appear to the children of Israel. Somebody say amen. When the cloud appeared, it came into visibility in terms of when they were coming out of the of the Egyptian bondage for 400 plus years, they were captives, amen. So stop saying Moses led God's children. The Bible clearly says that he led them by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. The visible appearance of God terrorizes the enemy. Could you imagine one million people Coming out on this big pillar of cloud. Now, when I'm talking cloud, I'm not talking nimbus stratus or cirrus or, 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 or one of those things. I'm talking about the glory of God. Come into such a wonderful, powerful place. Am I talking to you? That when, he, when the children of Israel, they had no map. They had no GPS. They had nothing. They didn't know where to go. When the cloud moved, when the cloud stopped, it was there for covering in the hot sun. In the sun, my friend, when, the, when God came over the Egypt and the, Jew, the, the people of God, he gave them a new atmosphere. I don't care how hot the outside air. When you live in Jesus, he gives you a new atmosphere. Come on, lift your hand and say, I live in the atmosphere of the glory of God. The spirit, the sun shall not smite me by day, yeah, not the moon by night, because he has covered me. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Begin this message, say amen. amen. So the cloud did what? I'll go quickly. The cloud led them, and there's a scripture that says in Exodus chapter 14, it says when the Egyptian army was coming, the cloud did not run away and went forth and leave them. The cloud moved. And came between. Ooh. So you guys go. He came between the enemy and God's people. How I many you know that God sometimes moving and you don't know He's moving in your behalf? You have been pursued by things that you don't know. That when the enemy come upon you to eat up your flesh, the Lord is moving on your behalf. Amen. The enemy will stumble and fall. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah today. So the cloud did what? Now let me give you a word. The meaning for the word cloud in the Old Testament comes from the word kabod. Kabod or kabud means the, the glory of God. It's called the glory cloud. Amen. When that happens uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 10 verse 1 and 2 says, when Israel went into the cloud, they were all baptized. Amen. Are you hearing me? They were washed away from the slave mentality. God washed them from the Egyptian, passed them through the cloud and the sea. Amen. Woo, come on, hallelujah. Now the cloud did what? When the cloud came down in first, second Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 7, or seven actually 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, when they were having this great feast and they offer all the sacrifice, the cloud came down again. And the glory of God came that even the messengers and the Servants and the priests could not minister because the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Amen. Are you there with me? Amen. And I could go on and on about the cloud in the Old Testament. How many of you love that? Amen. But the kabod, now when the Spirit of God departs from a place, it's called Ichabod. Ichabod? Ichabod. I say Ichabod, itching me. Because, because the Bible says you have itchy ears. When people have itchy ears and move away from the things of God. 
Let me just want to hear the word of God here this morning. I came to preach Jesus. I didn't come to preach who I am or who this one is. No, I came to tell you something that will change your life forever. Amen. The path here of the Spirit of God, the Bible says that the, the Israelite um, people, they, they start to use God as a good luck charm. And the, Eli had two sons named Hophni and Phinehas. And the Bible says that they began to use uh, the ark of God as a good luck charm. Be careful using God as a good luck charm in your life. Am I saying it clearly? Or well, some people say, I can't go to sleep without having the Bible next to me. The Bible next to you won't help you. The Bible inside of you will do better for you. Amen. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. If your hand and say hallelujah today. There's going to come a time they will not even want you to read the Bible. They will have a Bible, but will not be this Bible. There's going to come a time that if you speak the name of Jesus the way that the name some people speak, spoken, they are going to haul you to jail. Are you ready for those days? Oh no, Pastor, I am comfortable. I'm going. You can't go to heaven on flowery beds of ease while others pass through bloody seas. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. If there is a battle to be fought, or a battle to be fought now is for Christians to stand up for their faith. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Church, are you hearing the word of God? Amen. Are there anybody who are willing to lay down? You can't live for Christ until you're ready to die for Christ. Stop saying, I want to live for you, Lord. I want to live for you. And when trouble comes, you want to run away from him. That kind of love would not work. Amen. You have to lay it down. Somebody say amen. So the cloud had so many different attributions. And I, and, and I know today the modern world today have so many words for cloud. Cloud has gotten a bad rap. You see somebody says, um, oh my God. You know what they say? What is it about the cloud? He says, man, that man have cloudy vision. He, he or she is under a cloud of suspicion. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. Or oh, oh, we, we, we don't like clouds in the sky. We just want a bright day. The cloudy day. I don't want a cloud. Are you hearing me? Am I talking to some of you here? That's how the world say. And then they have one positive one that says, when you're happy. Oh, no, they have next one that says, Oh, he or she, they have their head in the cloud. Their head is in the cloud. He's full of pride. He has unrealistic expectation. Unrealistic expectation. Your head in the cloud. Am I talking to you? Amen. Or maybe some of you told somebody that. Well, I have. My head is in the cloud. And I have no expectation from you, but I expect God to show up today. Amen. I'm not full of pride, but I'm getting ready for a ride. Where the groom will come up for his bride, and we'll serve him side by side. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But the point, let's get back. But there is another word that some of you don't know. There's a new word that has been coined in the last 15 years or maybe more. It's called another form of cloud. It's called the iCloud. The iCloud is where you have your medical or the digital cloud is where you have all your information in. Are you hearing me? Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? You put your phone. I send up in the cloud. My pictures are in the cloud. My memories are in the cloud. Are we talking the word? What cloud are you talking about? What cloud are you talking about? Because some people, that cloud had problem recently in technology that they couldn't access. And they couldn't access medical records and they couldn't, because that cloud is a cloudy cloud that is full of darkness. But there's another cloud for the believer. We call it the glory cloud. The divine cloud. Somebody say hallelujah. He's coming back in a cloud of glory. Amen. Now, please do not get vexed with me, but I was a victim of this, and I only recently, the Lord wake me up about 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, and had, I had this conversation with the Lord. I read in the scriptures, and I read in the scriptures, and I sing in, on the bright and cloudless morning. <laughs> what? He says, on the bright and cloudless morning. And I said, Lord, let me read this again, you say. And it shocked me that he's coming back in the cloud. 
I'd like to show you scripture after scripture. So we are looking for a bright and cloud this morning when he's coming back in the same Jesus that went up in the cloud is coming back in the cloud. Amen. Woo, isn't that something? Can you adjust your theology so you can get neology and come away from technology? Can you adjust your theology and say, if he's, I want to see him where he's coming. My eyes are looking towards something that is not natural. Amen? So, time is on me. Did you enjoy the word so far? Amen. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. The cloud. There is a dark cloud that is coming. I'm going to be prophetic right now. Could you say amen? There's a hand of a dark cloud that is coming over the earth. There is a struggle right now. And there's a, you should say, storm clouds are gathering. Am I talking to you? Storm clouds are coming. Dead beds are gathering. But I'm not talking to the natural. He's coming back. Not in a digital cloud, but in the cloud of glory. You lift your hands with me this morning. We have part two of this message. Maybe you will hear more, but did you enjoy the message? Did I, did I, did I wake your mind? Did I wake your mind up? Amen. Just lift your hands and give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing one little song. I hope you don't mind. Just give my little thing here. There is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. I am going to meet him, meet him there in that land beyond the sky. Start singing, you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. It be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one at the meeting in the air. If you believe, if you believe that God is coming, Jesus is coming, stand to your feet right now. Don't lose focus on his coming. I got to preach the return of Christ. Can't preach about who doing you wrong and who wrong you. Just keep your eyes upward. Amen. Yes. He's coming back with rewards and he's coming back with judgment. Are you hearing that? Amen. Yes. So, Father, this morning, I don't know how this went over, but I hope it went over well. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.